Hello. In this lecture, we will be discussing what is spin orbit interaction and doublet fine structure in the context of one electron systems. Before going into the details of spin orbit interaction, I would like to explain how energy states are represented in LS coupling. This is how an energy state is represented. The state is uh, named with capital L with a superscript of 2s plus 1 and a subscript of j where s, l and j are respectively the total spin quantum number, orbital quantum number and angular momentum quantum number. Now, with regard to the filling of energy levels, there are certain rules involved. The first rule goes like this. Filling happens in accordance with Pauli's exclusion principle. And while filling, the highest ml value state gets the first electron. And starting with highest ml value states, all states are filled with upspin electron, which has ms of plus half. Once all the orbitals in a subshell have one electron each, then the remaining ones are added in the same order. That is starting with highest ml value state. But here you fill them with downspin electron which has ms of minus half. Where I would like to highlight that ml and ms are magnetic orbital quantum number and ms is magnetic spin quantum number. Now the second rule goes like this. To obtain capital S and capital L, this is what you have to do. To obtain capital S, add all ms values of each electron. And to get capital L, add all ms values of each electron. Now what is the value that J can take? If your subshell is less than half filled, then J takes the value mod L minus S. If it is half filled, then J takes the value S. And if it is more than half filled, J takes the value L plus S. Now that we are familiar with the rules of filling electrons in the available energy states, we will just see how to write the ground state term symbol. Consider the example of hydrogen. In a hydrogen atom, you have one electron and that one electron goes into the oneness state. Now, what do you mean by the oneness state? Since the state is S, L is equal to 0. Now, ML being the projection of L, onto a reference direction, ml will take values from plus l through 0 to minus l. Since l equal to 0 here, ml can take only the value 0. Now, as per the rule, the state should be filled with an upspin electron whose ms is plus half. So, that is all. Now, to find capital S, all you have to do is add all ms values and here there is only one ms value and you get a value of half for capital S. And 2s plus 1 becomes 2. Now, this state is a state with ml equal to 0. So, capital L which is sum of all ml is 0. Now, when we say that L is 0, the corresponding term is S, capital S. Just as we say for small s, if the subshell is small s, then corresponding quantum number is L equal to 0. Similarly, for the total orbital quantum number value of 0, the corresponding term is capital S. Now, what is the value that J takes? Now, this is the case where the subshell is half filled. Now for a half filled case, J takes the value S. So here J takes the value half because S is half here. So the state is represented as 
2s plus 1 l j where your 2s plus 1 is 2 and corresponding to l equal to 0 the term is s and j is half. So the energy state is represented as 2s half. Now let's move on to another example of helium which has two electrons. Now here again filling has to go in accordance with the rules that we mentioned before. Both the electrons go into the 1s state. For the s state L equal to 0 and ML equal to 0. This is same as the previous case. Now what changes here? There are two electrons. So one has to be up spin and the other has to be down spin. So ms values will be plus half and minus half. So the total uh, spin quantum number s which is summation ms will take value of 0 and 2s plus 1 will be 1. Capital L is same as before which is summation ml which is 0 here because for both electrons both electrons are in the s state and for the s state ml equal to 0. Now for l equal to 0 the corresponding term is s and this is a case where this subshell is completely filled. For a completely filled case we saw before that j will take the value s and here s is 0. So uh, what is the value that j can take? L is also 0, s is also 0 and uh, your j will take the value 0. Okay. Now what is the term here? 2s plus 1 l j. It is 1 s 0. Okay. I hope it is clear. Now we move on to an example of carbon atom where you have 6 electrons and this is the way filling goes. 1s state has 2 electrons, 2s state has 2 electrons and the remaining 2 electrons go into the 2p state. And the 2 electrons are filled starting from ml equal to plus 1 state and then the second electron goes to ml equal to 0 state. So now we have exhausted all our electrons and for the p state uh, see the filling is 1s, 2s and 2p. For the p state L equal to 1 and ML can take 3 values plus 1, 0 and minus 1 of which ML equal to plus 1 and ML equal to 0 is occupied with an upspin electron. And for upspin electron ms is plus half each. So what is the value of capital S? Capital S will be plus half plus half gives you a value 1 and your 2s plus 1 happens to be 3. Now what is the value of capital L? Capital L is summation ML which takes the value plus 1 and 0 because electrons occupy only these two states. And capital L equal to 1 means the corresponding term is p term. Now this is a case where you can accommodate a maximum of six electrons but there are just two electrons here. So this is a case less than half filled. Now for a less than half filled case j can take the value mod l minus s. Okay now what is l here? l is 1. What is s here? s is also 1 and mod l minus s will be 0. So you the, your term will be 3 p 0. Okay. Now as a last example we can discuss chlorine which has 17 electrons. If we write down the electronic configuration it goes like this 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 and with that 10 electrons have been filled. Now remaining 7 electrons Two electrons go into the 3s state that is also completely filled and 3p state it can accommodate 6 electrons but we have only 5 electrons. Okay so let's write down just the filling in the 3p state. So this is how my state looks like. 
I have ml values of plus 1, 0 and minus 1. Initially, I fill in upspin electrons in all the three starting with ml equal to plus 1 state. Then I filled the remaining two electrons as downspin. And now I don't have another electron to put in the ml equal to minus 1 state. I have exhausted all my electrons. Now, let us see what is the uh, value that capital L takes. I have two electrons with ml plus 1, two electrons with ml 0 and one electron with ml minus 1. So, my capital L becomes 1. I have two electrons uh, with spin down and three electrons which are spin up. So, my capital S would be like this and I will get a value of half. So, my 2s plus 1 would be 2. And this is a case where a maximum of 6 electrons can be accommodated and I have 5 electrons filled. So, it is a case of more than half filled and j can take the value l plus s. And that happens to be 3 by 2. So, my term is represented as 2p 3 by 2. Now, we would like to know why is it that in the spectra of one electron systems, we see that certain lines which appear to be a single line are not single lines. They are actually doublets. So, we would like to know what is the reason for such an occurrence. We had already discussed in our previous lectures that Associated with orbital as well as spin motion, there is a magnetic moment. Associated with the orbital motion of the electron, there is a magnetic moment. Associated with the spin motion of the electron, there is a magnetic moment. And uh, we are now just going to briefly or superficially explain the occurrence of doublets in the spectra of one electron systems due to a mechanism called spin orbit interaction. If we say it in very simple words, we can just assume that the spin vector precesses in the magnetic field produced by the orbital angular momentum vector. What does that mean? Just now I mentioned that there is a magnetic moment associated with orbital motion of the electron. What do you mean by a magnetic moment? Magnetic moment indicates the strength of the, is an indicator of the strength of the magnetic field produced due to orbital motion of the electron. So, when I am saying there is a magnetic moment associated with the orbital motion, I mean that a magnetic field is being produced due to orbital motion of the electron. And it is assumed that the spin vector precesses in the magnetic field produced by orbital angular momentum vector. And due to this interaction, what happens is there is a change in kinetic energy of precession of spin vector and when there is a change in kinetic energy there is a shift in position of energy levels too and as per our syllabus requirements we do not need the derivation of uh, how much the energy changes but we will just uh, see the final uh, change in energy that happens due to this interaction and that is given by gamma. We just mentioned that due to this interaction there will be a change in energy level and what is the extent of change that is given by gamma and the expression for gamma is like this a by 2 times j into j plus 1 minus l into l plus 1 minus s into s plus 1. So, we are telling that 
without this magnetic field the energy level would have taken a particular position and due to the presence of this magnetic field and the interaction of spin vector with this magnetic field the energy level of electron shifts a bit and how much it, it shifts is given by gamma okay so the position of the new energy level would be t0 minus gamma t0 is the term which uh, which is a hypothetical position which tells you if there were no magnetic field and no such interaction the energy level would have been somewhere here and due to the interaction energy level changes and that change is magnitude of that change is given by gamma and the position of new energy level is given by t now for a one electron system now for a one electron system we can use small letter l and s for capital letter l and s because there is only one electron there is no uh, problem of taking resultant l resultant s and obtaining capital l and capital s now if we take the case l equal to 0 suppose we assume that the one electron goes in the state with l equal to 0 and since there is only one electron the s value is half we know that the possible values that j can take is l plus half to mod l minus half and here only one value is possible because l equal to zero and s equal to half l plus half is also half and l minus half is also half mod l minus half is also half so j can take the value only half now when l equal to 0 the state is or when l equal to 0 capital l is also 0 and the state is represented with capital letter s and when s is half my 2s plus 1 becomes 2 so the state is represented with 2s half so for the state s this is how we represent it 2s half now if we consider the case when l equal to 1 and s equal to half j can take values from l plus half to mod l minus half what is l plus half l plus half is 1 plus half which is 3 by 2 and l minus s would be 1 minus half which is half and mind you all these uh, values from l plus half to mod l minus half should differ by unity so here after 3 by 2 the value that differs by unity is half so j can take only two values 3 by 2 and 1 by 2 now when we say l equal to 1 the corresponding state is p state and when we say s equal to half 2s plus 1 is always 2 now since we have two j values the possible energy levels are 2p 3 by 2 and 2p half so what do we understand for a term p in one electron system there are two possible energy levels 2p half and 2p 3 by 2 here what is different j values are different and for different j values if we look at the expression for gamma we understand that for different j values gamma will be different so what is gamma for j equal to 3 by 2 gamma is evaluated like this using the expression given before and we obtain it as a by 2 now what is gamma for j equal to half plug in the values and obtain gamma as minus a 
So what do we understand? When gamma is minus a, it indicates that the level shifts downward from the hypothetical position by this much. And for gamma positive, the level shifts upwards by this amount. Mind you, the spacings from the hypothetical positions are not the same. For j equal to 3 by 2, gamma is a by 2. Whereas for j equal to half, gamma is minus a. So when you are drawing the levels from the hypothetical position, the spacing of p half from the hypothetical position should be twice that of spacing of p3 by 2 from the hypothetical position. To make it more clear, let us take the case of L equal to 2 and S equal to half. J can take values 5 by 2 and 3 by 2. Now when we say L equal to 2, capital L equal to 2, the state is capital D and 2S plus 1 is always 2. So two states are possible with two different J values, 2D 3 by 2 and 2D 5 by 2. Now for j equal to 5 by 2 and 3 by 2, if we evaluate gamma, we obtain it as plus a and minus 3a by 2. So the minus 3a by 2 state goes down and plus a state goes up from the hypothetical position. So in one electron system, due to spin orbit interaction, every energy level except the 2s state splits into two. So these are the possible energy levels due to spin orbit interaction. 2s half, 2p half, 2p3 by 2, we just saw now. 2d3 by 2, 2d5 by 2, etc. Now, how does this explain the fine structure of sodium D lines? Sodium is a one electron system. It has 11 electrons and if we go as per the filling rules 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, I have exhausted 10 electrons and the remaining one electron goes into the 3s state. Now, so sodium is a one electron system and I am observing a doublet in the spectrum of sodium atom and that is what I am mentioning as D1 and D2 lines of sodium. In the spectra of sodium atom I am observing two closely spaced lines and I am going to explain how those lines occur. In atomic spectrum there are several series of doublets arising which are named as sharp series, principal series, diffuse series and fundamental series. In the case of sodium atom, a doublet is observed which belongs to the principal series. Now what do principal series mean? Principal series arise due to transitions from 2p state to 2s state. Now we already saw that in the case of one electron system, when I say 2p states, two energy levels are possible, 2p half and 2p 3 by 2. Whereas 2s state is just a single state, 2s half. So if I just depict the two states, 2p 3 by 2 and 2p half and the 2s half states and writing down the selection rules, selection rules are like this. Principal quantum number can take any value or can change by any value. Change in delta uh, or change in L that can happen only by plus or minus 1. Change in J can happen like this. It can be 0 or it can be plus or minus 1. And delta S there should be no change where N, L, J and S are the principal orbital, total angular momentum and spin quantum numbers respectively. So if we look here, 
all are 2p and 2s states so here s is half that is why 2s plus 1 is 2 for all these states it is the same value of s so s is not changing now when i say p state l equal to 1 and when i say s state it means l equal to 0 and here so from p state to s state a transition is possible without violating this selection rule because from l equal to 1 state l equal to 0 state transition is possible via this selection rule now if i look at the changes in j value if my electron jumps from this state to this state here j is 3 by 2 and here j is half what is the difference in j values difference in j value is plus 1 so that is absolutely possible by this selection rule and here j is half and here also j is half so electron can jump from this state to this state because my selection rule allows it so i can observe two transitions in the spectrum of sodium atom which have wavelengths respectively as 5890 angstrom and 5896 angstrom but these are very closely spaced wavelengths through our naked eyes we cannot understand the difference between these two wavelengths and we just see yellow light coming from a sodium vapor lamp but on close observance of the spectrum we can see that it is not a single wavelength that is coming out it is actually two wavelengths which are very closely separated and the reason for occurrence of two lines is because the upper energy state is not a single state but it is actually split into two and this splitting happens due to spin orbit interaction so that is how doublet fine structure is explained in one electron systems hope it is clear thank you